in this example, ladies and gentlemen, what we're trying to do, Sarah, is we're trying to show that the left side is equal to the right side. So at this point in the stage, you guys can see the left side doesn't really look anything like the right side, right? But using the identities that I provided to you guys last class period, we know we can rewrite this in many different ways, right? So far, at least on the notes, we came up with seven different ways. And there's more than that. So there's a lot of different ways that we could think about this problem. But I want you guys to kind of think about some of the easier ways to break things down. Even though you have seven different like options up there, um, one of the easier ways to kind of look at this is, or if you get stuck because you don't see it visually, what we want to do is we want this to equal 1. That means we want things to divide, right, into 1. So Reese, one of the best ways, <laughs> one of the best things to kind of look at, if you don't, once you get stuck and you don't like visualize this as far as what's supposed to look like what, just convert everything to sines and cosines. So in this case, we could use the quotient identity. So I could say cosine of theta over sine of theta times sine of theta over cosine of theta. Now, when you're verifying your identities, I'm OK with you guys working on one side. And then just using the equal sign, you don't need to always rewrite what's on the other side. And then you guys can see, oh, yeah, I forgot. These are reciprocal functions of each other, right? Reciprocal functions of each other equal 1. But I'm showing you at least the work why that's the case. So therefore, you can say that the, you know, you could regroup these. Associated property over addition or multiplication. You don't have to do this. I'm just showing you. Oh, yeah. 1 equals 1, and then it's been verified. However, you're not going to have anything this easy on your test or quiz. But um, 